Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Someday with Jay Barsky. This episode's guest is well known content creator Giselle Toussaint. Giselle has what's known as the Explore with Gigi page in which she shares a lot of her traveling and dining experiences with food vendors all throughout South Florida. You'll hear us talk about some of her favorite dining experiences, being able to explore various festivals, and much more. So with that being said, I hope you enjoy our Sunday with Giselle Chuson. Giselle Chuson, what's up? How are you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. I would say a lot of your posts really inspire me to explore these restaurants that you mentioned. I mean, you do a lot of other sites as well, but one big thing that you do in restaurants is like Palm Beach County, which I think when we spoke earlier that I have like a bucket list of like a lot of stuff that you do. One of my favorites is El Atico. I love their chicharrones on there. Yes. They have good soup too. Okay. I got to check that out. So I kind of wanted to start off, you know, mentioning all this and stuff that inspired me to go out and explore different areas. What got you interested in photojournalism or just doing all of this and starting your content with Explore with Gigi? Yeah, so at a young age, I was always very creative. So I was lucky enough to have a digital camera since I was in like third grade. Field trips, I was out taking pictures of everything. So that kind of really inspired the whole photojournalism part, which is what I originally was doing and originally wanted to do. So I have traveled a lot with my mom. We've been to 24 countries together. So I would go out and take a lot of pictures. And that was before TikTok and all that stuff. So that's how that started. And then once YouTube came about, or I just started being more knowledgeable on YouTube. I'm like, maybe I should start posting vlogs and showing people these travel destinations that I go to. I want to show people a world that they never knew existed. So that was my thought in high school. Never did anything with it. And then college came. I was busy in college, didn't do much. And COVID happened. I graduated, didn't have a job, got on TikTok. And I, at that point, had like a jewelry business. So I was trying to market the jewelry business by just doing travel tips on my personal account, wearing the jewelry. And the travel tips never really worked out. And I just post, I posted one video of the fair, the South Florida fair, which is iconic in Palm Beach County. And it blew up. It got half a million views and a few days, I gained 10,000 followers in one night. And that is just what kind of pushed me to do food. I'm like, this could be it, like my thing. This could be an Mm -hmm. actual niche. I've never seen anyone show food in Palm Beach County because not a lot of people are aware that Palm Beach County actually has a lot of things to do. So then I posted one restaurant right after that. It did really well. And that's a local spot that I always go to, Chris Taverna in Lantana. And they told us like, people just started coming from this video. And I'm like, whoa, this might really be a thing. And I just began monetizing it and created it the business that it is today. Is jewelry kind of like another interest that you've been in? So jewelry was just something to do during COVID, like e-commerce. I'm like, maybe I can do jewelry, right? So I would order Mm -hmm. stuff. And I was still doing it last year, but I completely had to close that company because I was getting so much more done with explore with Gigi that I just had to put that to like to the side I couldn't do I couldn't market two things at once growing up did you have like other journalists that kind of inspired you to do this no so I give a huge shout out to my high school yearbook teacher who when I first like transferred to that high school as a sophomore I like wanted to do photography. So he put me as like editor in chief for photography. And then he really pushed me to just reach my limits when it came to even videography, which I never touched, you know, getting certified in Photoshop and all these things, which I really took for granted. Mm -hmm. And now that I look at it, I'm like, well, I really should have done all those things that he told me to, because it would have been so much more valuable now that I'm currently using it like every day. 
you have a great eye. I always admire your videos, the postings, and I'm pretty much like every time I see like some of them, my mouth waters just like, like I had to hurry up and go to these places. I always have it on my schedule. Like I'll take a screenshot of the place and just look it up, especially all the food items that you post. Yeah, I try my best to make it look as appealing. Obviously, I always tell these restaurants, the way that you serve it to me is the way that you have to serve it to everyone else. Mm -hmm. So I don't want anything extra in these dishes, sometimes extra cheese, because I love extra cheese, and I want to get that cheese pull. But it needs to be as real as it can be. It's just like you said, the eye and the lighting is what makes makes it pop off. I'm embarrassed to say this, but I'm not a big fan of cheese. But like even your postings when you make it that cheese pull, it was like even I'm like, damn, I want I want to like, eat that. That looks good. I'm very lactose intolerant. So I'm like, ugh. Like it looks so good, but it's so bad for me. And I saw that you actually have a Spanish page that you recently started. So what got you interested in starting that? So Spanish was my first language. I was born in New York, but you know, having immigrant parents. Spanish was my first language. And I saw that there was an opportunity there. You know, I speak Spanish. Why not translate my own content? There's a lot of, you know, non English speakers that would find value in the content. So I went ahead and did that page. I haven't really been active on it because it is a little difficult to post and repost everything. But it's, it's a work in progress. But you mentioned the South Florida fair that really got you interested in exploring this content. So what are some of your favorite festivals that you checked out so far? So this year I went to Coachella and nice. wow, I was impressed. I got media access and had a bit more of an elevated experience than, you know, your regular GA pass, but it was one of the best experiences I've had at a festival. I also went to Tomorrowland in 2019, and that was insane. The way the dynamic in Europe for that festival is just completely different from what you get here in the in the States. Now, I haven't yet explored Coachella, but I heard that's a festival that you have to actually go a few times to really actually gather everything about it. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like being... I've been going to festivals since I was 15. So just knowing the dynamic of things, how schedules work, how maps work, I feel like I saw a lot of it. And also, like I said, having that media access, I'm able to ask questions to like very knowledgeable people that are on the grounds. So, I mean, I still missed out on some things that I didn't know was going on, mm -hmm. but I feel like I got a pretty full experience on it. And I think I saw something that you were doing interviews at the festivals as well. Yeah, so that's where the media aspect comes in. Um, I just wanted, you know, I want to broaden my horizon as much as I can. I have so many interests and I find it that to be able to grow, you need to do different things. So I am very passionate about going to festivals and music, house music and all that stuff. So I find that it's very hard to get to know your favorite artists because they're only doing very specific interviews. So I am able to like interview people that are just starting out and ask them those, what's your favorite thing to eat? Where do mm -hmm. you like to travel? Which you never get to hear from your favorite people. Do you have a bucket list of people you want to interview? I mean, at the moment, I don't really have like a bucket list because it's something so new that I don't know how far it can really get me since I don't have a huge platform on YouTube yet with these interviews, I can't really get to those top tier celebrities or DJs. Mm -hmm. But at this point, it's like anyone who I'm able to get in with, I will do because it's still you don't know the potential that people have. So the South Florida Fair, is that probably your favorite here in South Florida? Or do you have other favorites? So in, the state? in Florida, festival wise, well, the fair is the fair. I think, you know, I, I grew up going to the fair, so that's pretty cool. But festival wise, um, Three Points, which is in Miami, is one of my favorite festivals, as well as Okeechobee Music Festival, which sadly this year was the last year they did it. But I was able to go like four times. So I got got everything out over there. Do you have a favorite festival food item? Festival food item. To be honest, I don't eat a lot when I go to festivals. But 
now that I have explored with Gigi, when I do go to festivals, we do food. And mm-hmm. at Coachella, I had an insane grilled cheese. And I also had a omakase experience. So I think it was 16 courses or 15. And it was super exclusive. I think between the two weekends, no more than 500 people were able to experience that. Oh, nice. And I think that by far was the best festival food slash experience because it was so different. And you also been posting your experience and doing some cruise ships. Is that right? Yeah. So I recently had the opportunity to work with Royal Caribbean, um, which is a dream come true. I'm trying to move more into travel. So that kind of is like segueing me to do that. Like I told you before, I've traveled a lot with my mom and after COVID, I haven't really gotten out there, but I'm starting to plan more trips so that my explore page can actually be really about exploring and not just food. Originally, my name was Foodies with Gigi. And I transitioned, I did a whole rebranding to explore with Gigi because I didn't want to be so stuck on just food. My passion is travel and eating when I go somewhere. So I want to create a community for that where you can come to my page and be like, I'm going to go to Colorado. Has Gigi been there? Let's see what places she went to, what she ate and what she did. Well, it's funny, like when you mentioned seeing where you've been to, like, there's some spots that there's one I can uh, remember seeing. It's the bunny ear churros. The churros. Yeah. And I saw the Explore with Gigi like sticker. I've been to other spots that I, I saw the Explore with Gigi. It's like, okay, I like that stamp of approval with your sticker. Yeah. And it was, I wanted to do something different. You know, I'm always trying to think of new things to do, ways to innovate. And if Yelp and TripAdvisor can give out a sticker, why can't I? Mm -hmm. So I think it makes it a bit easier when, you know, the community of people that I have following me go to a place and they can see that sticker and be like, okay, this is a spot. We're at the right place. And just have like that sense of approval as well. I can tell it's very authentic. You really do enjoy the food that you post on everything. Like I said, I've explored to a lot of places and there's no place that I don't like. Like I just love all the food places. That's why I make sure everything that you post, like especially within Palm Beach County, because I travel a lot doing comedy, whether it's in Palm Beach County, going all the way down to Miami-Dade and other parts of Florida. So one thing I always like to do is actually look up the places that you've explored and try to like put that into my travel itinerary. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I mean, I always tell people, because sometimes someone will go somewhere and be like, it sucked. I don't like the food. And I like to remind people that I am not reviewing. I'm just recommending because not everything mm-hmm. is for everyone. Um, for example, I don't eat a lot of seafood. So I always have my mom come with me. My mom is with me 99% of the time when I'm going to these restaurants and she loves seafood. So mm-hmm. if she can eat it and she likes it and she would recommend that to a friend, it's going in the video. I haven't really had a lot of issues with restaurants not providing good food because I try to do my research beforehand as well. I'm a big barbecue person. Like I love to try to explore different barbecue places. But but if you ever have like different barbecue spots that invite you. I don't know if you saw the spot that I posted in Kendall. It's called Apocalypse Barbecue. Insane. In Palm Beach County, we have Tropical Smokehouse, which is really delicious. Yeah, I went to the tropical one after I saw your recommendation. And I I did see the Kendall one. And like after seeing that, I haven't made my way in a while in Miami. But at some point, I do plan having that because like I love barbecue. That's like my top. You have to go during the week because that place gets slammed on the weekends. Like you're not you're probably not going to be able to get what you want because they're going to be sold out. Yeah. And I remember the the skull cornbread. So good. Uh, mentioned like a bucket list for me so what kind of locations are on your bucket list like whether it's festivals restaurants travel destinations one of the travel destinations that i have really high on on my list right now is bali and that got super high on my list because of all the djs i interviewed I've only interviewed five, but four out of the five said Bali is one of their favorite places Mm. that they've ever been to. And I'm like, that is so interesting that you guys are all saying that I need to put that as a priority. So Bali, Australia, I would love to 
go to Norway and see the Northern Lights one day. Are you really interested in like Indian culture or like Indian food as well? So Indian, I like Indian food. I have a very low spice tolerance, so I'm not as adventurous to go over there right now, but I would still love to go because the culture is so different. I really like traveling to places more for their culture because you learn something every time you go somewhere. Seeing the culture, seeing the food and just the dynamic of things, I think really changes you or builds your character. Yeah, I agree. I So you mentioned Bali and that's like definitely one location I really would like to explore. I used to live in the Fiji Islands and they have, they're oh, wow. really big on Indian culture over there. So I, I've been exposed to a lot of that culture and that kind of just Bollywood movies was really a, a big thing that I got really into. And obviously they have a lot of film located in Bali. So yeah, I was really interested in that culture and like Bali is a, a big location I would like to do. But I understand you're also like big on Italian dishes, like you really like Italian food. Is that right? That is my favorite cuisine, hands down. What are some of your favorite Italian dishes? I think anything that has spaghetti in it, but mainly one of my favorite dishes has to be spaghetti al olio, which is a very simple dish. It's just spaghetti, olive oil, and like pasta water. It's so simple, but it just, I feel like it feeds my soul. Obviously, pizza is amazing. And carpaccio, which is raw meat with like olive oil and arugula. That's one of my favorite things to eat as well. And you also cook a lot yourself. Is that right? I do my fair share of cooking. Um, Since I'm out so much, I don't really have time to cook. But before I used to be more creative with the dishes I make now it's very simple salads protein veggies because of how much food I eat outside of home I try to keep it very healthy at home what are some Italian restaurants you kind of recommend here in South Florida so I would say going to Pescatori which is a complete hidden gem it's so easy to drive by it's right in between 45th and Palm Beach Lakes really good spot they make their gnocchi and everything in-house i also really liked osteria in miami they have really good food and up here in tequesta we have a spot called evo evo Mm. italian that's also a really good spot oh i almost forgot my favorite this i've been waiting for someone to ask me this question Mm -hmm. because i know my favorite place it's called pasta made by hand it's in little haiti And it's, you know, this Italian guy, they make all their pasta by hand and fresh. So you're getting such high quality like food. It it tastes like you're in Italy eating on the street. Like I'm big on pasta. I cook often myself. And one thing I like to cook often is like some Italian. It's easy to make at least for me. I'm always making pasta at home too. Lemon pasta, lemon chicken pasta. Is there any cooking shows you follow or any TV chefs that always like interest you? No, so I grew up watching Food Network because my mom always had it on, but I get very little TV time. I kind of just do my screen time on my phone. I'm on my phone almost all day, so I try to avoid watching TV. I haven't really been able to be exposed to new chefs or new things that are going on. And I know there's a lot of creators online that cook but I don't think I'm on that part like that side of TikTok I'm not on like cooking talk one thing that's always blowing up my feed on TikTok is anything relevant to food and which I like the fact that what shows in my feed I don't want anything else being shown but yeah I just love it like I could go all day well not all day but like just a long time just looking at food yeah I get no food I almost yeah almost no food content for me it's a lot of travel and very like random weird videos and conspiracy theories Mm. that's what's on my my TikTok so one thing I like to ask a lot of my guests is if anything that they experience stress like doing their day jobs or being really creative and what do they do kind of just to relax them to relieve that stress so is there any methods that you can share for yourself 
One thing that I like doing is walking my dog. I have recently really started to appreciate that. Getting her out and just leaving my phone inside the house and going on a nice walk and just breathing. Going into the sauna as well and just disconnecting completely. And I know this one's going to sound bad, but if I'm like very stressed and I'm like editing nonstop, I honestly lay down and go on like TikTok and I just <laughs> scroll. Because it, it, it gets my mind off of whatever it is that's going on. Well, I understand you also used to be a, a Taekwondo instructor and you were like a black belt. So is, yeah. arts, is that something like a stress so, reliever as well? It used to be. I recently tore my ACL a few months ago and I just got it. I just got surgery four months ago. So I haven't really been active in martial arts since I think I was 16. Once I started like going to high school, it just became a little bit harder. I was actually an instructor at 12. So from mm. 12 to wow. 15, 16, I was instructing. I was, I was pretty good, but never really got into competitions after a bad experience. I go to the gym, though, a lot. Um, now that my knee is healing a little bit better, I've been going to the gym more regularly. But that is also another way that I'm able to disconnect. What got you interested in Taekwondo? So when we first moved here from New York, there was a dance studio right next to the Taekwondo school. And my parents took me to the dance studio. And I was like, no, I don't want to do that. I want to do that. And I was pointing mm -hmm. at like the kids kicking and like punching. So they put me into that. And I just ended up being like a little tank. And I was pretty good. I was tiny. But I, I had a lot of power in my legs. Taekwondo is mainly the art of kicking. Yeah. So I just did that and stuck, stuck with it for a very long time. In college, I took just a basic karate class. And the highest level, I, I just passed the white belt. I got to a brown belt. But some kid actually kicked me in my face just doing a little sparring. So like after that, I'm, I think I'm good on doing karate. Yeah, I got kicked in the face. I actually ended up getting a nose job recently because of that kick that I got. Oh, wow. Kid. But it's funny that right now you just reminded me, I actually also taught Taekwondo in Ecuador. So I would go during oh. the summer with my mom for two weeks, uh, two months. And they just had like a little Taekwondo thing pop up at like the local gymnasium. And I actually taught there, which now that I think about it, that's so crazy. Mm-hmm. So once you're a black belt, are you kind of like a black belt forever? Like, could you still yeah. like be an instructor? Okay. You get certified. Like there is actually a whole thing that you go through. Um, you get like certified with the Cookie Wan in Korea, which is the Federation of Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. It's super legit. I have like a card and everything that oh, says wow. I'm a black belt, but I couldn't teach right now. I almost completely forgot everything that I learned. I'm pretty sure I still have my form down a little bit okay but i don't remember all the step-by-step -step things that you had to do so i used to do a little boxing like training back in the day and i've kind of been rusty obviously because i haven't need to practice it but i started implementing it into my stand-up and started doing some boxing like shadow boxing which it's a good bit that i work on that everybody loves but and it was really just an excuse for me to actually start doing it again that's really cool. <laughs> but I, I've been trying to get more active. Like I do a little kicking and martial arts kind of thing. So I try to do it myself. So do you have any special routines that you follow throughout your day or your week, whether it's with doing the Explore with Gigi contact or any like exercise routines? Yeah. So I mentioned walking my dog earlier. Every morning I wake up, brush my teeth, walk her. That's just a very routine thing. I don't drink coffee. Me walking her is what wakes me up to start my day. I always, I like drinking tea a lot. So I make a tea every morning, if not just something warm to kind of like warm myself up. Mm -hmm. But other than that, every day is very different. I still work a nine to five remotely. So I have to hop on there, make sure all my emails are answered. I go to the meetings that I have to go to and I try to edit one to two videos a day so I have a lot of content that I just have to have roll out that's something that has become very routine and it a lot of people ask me like do you get tired of doing the same thing every day like editing a video every single day 
And it's crazy that I don't, which I don't know how. I think it's because it's something that I really love and enjoy to do. So it doesn't seem like a task. It's it's fun to edit those videos. No, I agree. Especially like editing videos. I don't know what you typically use, but previously when I used to do like a, a video podcast before this one, one thing I, I liked about doing editing, it wasn't like a same thing over again. I kind of like did things to better and upgrade. So like the challenges weren't the same. Like there was a different challenges. Sometimes it would be a bigger challenge for me. And I like would do something to overcome it to kind of like make myself a better editor. Correct. Yeah. Right now I'm trying to get more into YouTube and the editing on there right now that I'm using for Premiere. It's rough. Like you got, you guys can go see those videos and it's nothing very crazy. It's just cut, 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 mm -hmm. cut. But I do want to get to the point where, one, the editing time is lower, but I can incorporate more things that make it look more fun. So are you also kind of a, a night owl? Do you like work a lot of your editing at night or is it just like any time throughout the day that you have time for? It really depends. If I have like lunch and I, you know, I'm not hungry or I'm going to do something, I'll edit a video during lunch or if I just have some free time during the day. But usually at night, I do try to edit at least a video for dinner and this isn't something that I do every day obviously there's going to be days where I just don't want to edit anything um but usually after dinner one to two videos I try to get in well you mentioned that you work using premiere so are you okay with sharing like what do you use on your phone what yeah, editing so you use? YouTube I use premiere on my phone, I use InShot and CapCut. I use a combination of both. I used to be only exclusive to InShot, but now with closed captions, InShot doesn't have that. So I edit on InShot and then I upload that edited video to CapCut and do all the closed captions there. And is this stuff that you kind of knew before you did the Explore with Gigi content or you just start learn on your own while you were creating it? So learning to edit the content for TikTok was first on TikTok. I didn't know about any other editing apps. And when I did download them very early on, I didn't feel like they were user friendly or they just weren't doing what I wanted them to do. So I would edit on TikTok. And then mm -hmm. I downloaded InShot and started editing on InShot and uploading that to TikTok. Recently, probably four months ago, I started using CapCut. Okay. I'm always learning how to edit through like my phone as well. Uh, CapCut is one thing that I'm just started getting into, especially with like just my stand up. And that one thing I like to do is explore different venues for comedy, whether it's a, a Kava bar or just a regular bar or a comedy club. I have to kind of look at myself like a director, like I have to find like a good spot to just set up my phone on like where to stand it, make sure no one's around to like get in the way, yeah. like the sound. Yeah. Do you have any practices that help motivate you that you can recommend for our listeners? Yeah, I think I myself am a very driven and ambitious person. So I always want to see myself succeed and do well. And if I don't, I mean, I don't make that an issue. Like I don't, I'm not like, why didn't I do that? I always try to see how I can grow from that. I think a lot of us lack self-motivation because we need to prove something to someone. But I think really thinking about it as you're doing this for yourself and that's it, that mm -hmm. really helps grow, like help helps you grow as a person in general. As we're wrapping up, is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that they should watch out for? Yeah, so I have some pretty cool things planned. Um, I think by the time this comes out, my Japan trip is going to be right around the corner. With that Japan trip, my goal is to get more of that travel content for you guys. So keep an eye out for that. Of course, there's going to be food because there's some crazy mm -hmm. food spots in Japan, but oh, there's yeah. going to be a lot more things to do. I'm also going to Colombia, so keep an eye out for that. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned before, I am growing my YouTube channel. So there's going to be more vlogs, more behind the scenes. I try to focus that a little bit too on a day in the life of a content creator because so many people don't really know what goes behind doing all this. They think you just go out to a restaurant, eat and call it a day, but there's mm -hmm. so much more and so much more planning. So yeah, I just hope everyone enjoys that content that I'm going to be putting out. Oh, that's awesome, man. I'm excited about that Japan trip. 
Giselle Chuson, I appreciate this conversation. Are there any final thoughts you want to share with our listeners? I know one thing that a lot of people reach out to me for is how to get into content creation. And I bet a lot of you that are listening have that question. Um, My advice to you is going to be to just do it. Stop thinking about what other people might think. Your first few videos are going to be pretty terrible. Don't, you know, that doesn't matter because as we spoke earlier, that's the only way that you can improve is by learning from what you've previously done. So just go for it and you never know where that's going to take you. And that doesn't have to just be exclusively for content. If there's anything that you guys are trying to pursue, the only way you're going to be able to hit that goal is by actually doing something about it. Giselle Chusan, I appreciate this conversation. It's been my pleasure in speaking with you, but thank you so much for sitting down and talking with me and this podcast someday with Jay Barsky. Thank you. Thanks for listening to our episode with Giselle Chusan. Follow her on all her socials, which you may find in the episode notes. I hope you enjoyed our episode. Please rate and comment on the podcast to help make it grow. If you wish to follow me, all my socials are at I am Jay Barsky. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you soon.